All right, so now we're going to move on to uh, chapter 8. This is section 8.1, which is uh, the basics of probability. And let's just sort of talk about some uh, generalities. What is probability? It uh, it's, uh, allows, excuse me, it allows us to uh, talk about the likelihood that uh, something will happen uh, uh, in quantitative terms. Okay, so what sorts of things are we looking at? Well, uh, examples of what we might look at are uh, uh, sort of gambling related things or, or playing games like rolling dice or drawing uh, cards or say you know oftentimes when you look at the weather report uh, you'll see you know a percent chance of whatever um, or say random polling you know, when you ask people questions uh, to get some information about you know, what they think that is uh, something that uh, you care about the likelihood that somebody's going to answer uh, a given question a certain way. So what sorts of things are we looking at? We're looking at uh, random, let me even put a definition here. We're looking at random experiments. And what are random experiments? That uh, they are any observable phenomenon phenomena that do not necessarily yield the same result when repeated. So any of these you know, things up here are random experiments, or just experiments for short. Rolling dice or drawing cards, if you keep rolling dice you don't expect to get the same thing over and over. If you shuffle a deck and then keep drawing cards you're not going to expect to get the same card over and over. Weather. You know, we have an idea what the weather is going to be tomorrow, but everybody's like, oh, the weatherman's always wrong. Well, the weatherman is sometimes wrong because weather is unpredictable. Uh, but, you know, to some degree, it's random. Polling, too. If you select somebody uh, just completely at random, and how you do that is a question of, uh, uh, you know, some significance, you don't know what they're going to say. If you knew what they were going to say, you would just say to them, you wouldn't bother polling people. So, um, yeah. So those are examples of random experiments. Now, when I look at a, a, a random experiment, um, I'm going to uh, look at something called a sample space. So when we uh, set up an experiment, we need to decide what sorts of observ observations we are looking for. Yeah. So for example, uh, uh, you know, for example, you know, let's go to the weather. There are lots of different things that you can look at the weather. You know, the obvious things are like temperature and precipitation, but you could be looking at humidity, you could be looking at barometric pressure, you could be looking at, you know, all sorts of other things related to the weather. Um, but, so we have to really frame our question. So we're really frame our question, or frame, frame our question or experiment in a way that limits what we're looking for. So for the weather, we can look for we can ask about what the temperature is going to be. Temperature will be. We can ask uh, what sort of precip uh, precipitation will happen tomorrow or whatever. So those are specific sorts of observations we might look for. Temperature or precipitation, maybe both. When we uh, roll two dice, we could ask what numbers come up. Or we can ask, maybe we don't care about the numbers, maybe only we care about what is the total of the numbers on the dice. Sometimes that's all we care about. In a board game, you really just care about uh, how far you move most of the time. Uh, or are, did, uh, doubles, 
come up or not? Did the two dice have the same number come up or not? Those are different things we can look for. In polling, well, we have to ask a specific question. You're not just going to go up to somebody and say, tell me something about something that you just want to tell me about, because then that survey is not going to tell you anything about anything. You know, at least in terms of uh, you know, trying to glean information. Um, you know, that could be an interesting study. Hey, tell me something about something. But no, it's probably not going to be useful in terms of telling us information about uh, the, the world or whatever. So, um, let's have some definitions. First, uh, the sample space, excuse me, the simple outcomes or events, uh, let me not put simple in parentheses, simple outcomes uh, or events, simple outcomes or simple events are uh, the distinct observations we, uh, you know, constrain, you know, we are looking for. Okay. Now the book makes a distinction between outcomes and events. Outcome is supposed to be the real world term and event is supposed to be the uh, mathematical term. Um, I'll probably use them interchangeably, uh, but just be aware of that. And then the sample space is the set of simple outcomes or events. So again, let's go back to these examples of say, weather, weather, weather. What might we be interested in? Well, if we're interested in temperature, we, if we're looking at temperature, then the sample space, which we often do know by S, will be all real numbers, or real numbers bigger than, you know, uh, uh, you know, some amount, let's say, absolute zero. But those are the possibilities for temperature. If we're looking for precipitation, our sample space might be something like uh, nothing, rain, snow, sleet. Let me uh, fix that. Oh boy. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. Rain, snow, sleet, hail, etc. There's all sorts of precipitation that can occur. So those are possible sample sets, depend, sample spaces, depending on what sort of question we're asking about weather. Uh, let's say rolling two dice. What possibilities are there? If we're looking for the actual numbers that come up, we might be looking for the sample space to be all pairs x, y with x and y between 1 and 6. Okay, that would be literally the rolls that come up. But S could be um, numbers that are between 2 and 12. This would be all you know, uh, possible uh, totals that come up. Okay. Or we could even just ask something like, you know, the sample space could be the numbers are the same or the numbers are different, which would be saying are we rolling doubles or not. Finally, let's look at, say, polling. Depending on what sort of question you're asking, S could be, you know, who are you voting for president? Okay, it could be presidential, presidential candidates. Or what do you like better, Pepsi or Coke? So Pepsi, Coke, what do you like better? Neither. Maybe, maybe you like them both the same. Or maybe you don't drink them, so you say neither. I don't care about either one of these. So these are all different possibilities for uh, uh, sample spaces when we ask particular questions. Okay. Now, uh, another definition is sometimes we're interested in, you know, sort of a more broad event. You know, maybe when we look at presidential candidates, we're just wondering who is interested in voting Republican. Right now, there are a bunch of re Republican presidential candidates who are going for the nomination, but, you know, maybe we're just interested in, uh, uh, you know, what political party they're in. 
So a compound event uh, outcome or compound event is uh, a set of outcomes events and that is it's a subset of the sample space. So for example, you know, let's say again going back to all the examples we've been looking at rolling dice. I could let an event, we often write them as E be uh, at least one three comes up. That could be an event there. Or um, E could be the sum of the uh, dice is even. These are events. There's not just one way that a three can come up. There's more than one way that uh, some of the dice can be even. Um, these could be both be, uh, yeah, so these are, you know, different possible events. Um, let's say we're looking at uh, the weather. If we're looking at temperature, maybe an event could be that it's above freezing. You know, there are a lot of temperatures that are above freezing, but maybe we're just interested in the specific event that the temperature is above freezing. Or if we're looking at precipitation, uh, the event could be just, you know, some sort of precipitation. You know, I'm not really interested in whether it's going to be snow or rain or whatever. I'm just interested in is something going to be falling out of the sky? Frogs? I don't know. Uh, and finally, uh, polling. You know, I could be asking something like an event could be, uh, you know, I'm planning on voting for any Republican. Or the event could be, you know, I like all sodas. No, 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 uh, you know, any, uh, any soda. Or, yeah, whatever, I'm just going to ignore that. So, any Republican. Um, great. You know, let me, let me um, modify this. Let's suppose uh, the question is your favorite soda. So the sample space is all sodas. The event then could be, you know, any kind of cola. Okay, so your favorite soda could be any kind of cola. Maybe it could be, you know, another event F could be any, you know, uh, uh, fruit flavored soda, whatever. Okay, so let's just uh, stop this right here, but this is all the basics of the sort of things that we are looking at. Um, no, you know, uh, let me give us a, a real specific example. Uh, a real specific example. Let's find the sample space for uh, flipping uh, a coin twice. Well, if I flip a coin twice, I'm going to let H be the coin comes up head and T be the uh, coin comes up tails. Then my sample space is I could get heads then heads, heads then tails, tails then heads, or tails then tails. And let's, what are the simple outcomes? These are heads heads, heads tails, tails heads, and tails tails. What are some uh, compound outcomes? Let's say heads comes up uh, at least once. This would be the event. HH, HT, TH. Those are the ways that heads could come up at least once. What about heads comes up exactly once? I could write this as H, uh, T or TH. Um, or, you know, uh, the uh, coin comes up the same both times. So then my events would be heads, heads, tails, tails. Great. So those are explicit examples of compound events or outcomes.